GDPR is changing the landscape for data protection in the UK and across Europe from May this year. Um, for um, businesses that want to know a bit more about it, you can check out my videos uh, online on our website. So most businesses, um, Verity, as we've talked about, are um, preparing for the changes in relation to their customer data and the marketing that they're carrying out. Um, but there's also lots to be concerned about for HR departments and HR professionals, particularly around the data that they're holding around potential recruits and their current employees, as well as former employees. What's your take on this as an employment partner? Well, there are definitely some things that HR teams should be doing now and really as soon as possible given the pending date. Um, they should be doing this alongside their GDPR team, but definitely giving it attention at the moment. The first thing is to do a review of all the data you hold. What have you got and why? Think about this as widely as possible. So that could include your personnel files, it could include CCTV data, it could include emails, it could include any absence records you've got. It's basically any data that you've got that identifies an individual person that could do with your employees. And next, you've got to identify the lawful basis for processing that data. The following will be useful here. You can rely on it being necessary for performing the uh, contractual obligations, so your employment contract obligations, or to enter into that contract. Another ground is compliance with the legal obligations, so for example, keeping your national minimum wage records or doing your right to work checks. A further ground is if it's necessary for the legitimate interests of the business, although you do have to be careful to balance that with the rights of the individual, and you have to be able to explain what those legitimate interests are and whether or not, or to what extent, they override the interests of the individual. You may also be able to rely on your legitimate interests as an employer. Although, you have to be careful with that because it can be overridden by the rights of the employee. And you have to balance it up and show how you've assessed it and mitigated any of those risks. And what about consent for processing HR records? Um, that's something that's being used under the Data Protection Act. Will that still work under GDPR? Basically, only in very limited circumstances. This is because consent's got to be freely given and able to be withdrawn which in an employment situation is not going to work. So it's extremely likely that any consents that you've got already under the Data Protection Act aren't going to cover you and you're going to need to look at this in a fresh light. It's only going to be in very limited circumstances that you could use consent. So for example, if you have some, somebody who's unsuccessful in a job application, but you want to keep their CV on file for a later date, if you ask their specific consent to keep their information on file and they say yes, that would be a kind of situation where you could rely on consent because it can be freely given and withdrawn if the person wishes to do so. That's really helpful. Um, and are there any other steps that HR departments need to take to become compliant with GDPR? So once you've worked out what data you've got and what your lawful reasons for processing them are, you basically then have to document this. And the way to do it is with something called a privacy notice. And that's going to need to be prepared for any job applicants and also for your existing employees. And you'd need to consider those who have left as well or are going to leave. Do you include that information within a privacy notice for your current employees? Or do you create a new one? The privacy notice has got to set out concisely, transparently and plainly what data you've got and the basis that you're processing this. So it's important once you've got that documentation in place that you also train the staff on it, um, particularly because they really need to understand how GDPR works so they can apply it in the right situations. If you just have a policy that no one reads or understands, you're not going to be GDPR compliant. Remember, you've also got to update your contracts and your handbooks to reflect the new documentation and to remove any of the old consents. And what about the rights of employees around accessing their own data um, that are held by the HR departments? Is there anything changing in that area under GDPR? So another area to be aware of that's changing is around data subject access requests. Um, these can be made by employees or job applicants to know what data you're holding on them and the timescale for responding is dropping from 40 days down to a month and also the individual doesn't need to pay a fee anymore. So it's important that the HR team knows that that has changed and has processes in place to be able to deal with them. It's worth being aware that if the data is sensitive, so for example to do with any of their protected characteristics or their health, then there are further legal criteria that you have to satisfy in order to keep that data. So Joe, are there other steps that businesses should be looking at more generally around GDPR that will also impact on HR records that you're aware of? Yeah, absolutely. One of the most important things um, for businesses to get to grips with is who their suppliers are in terms of data protection. Who is dealing with the data of your, in this case for HR departments, it'll be who's dealing with the data of the employees that you've got, 
and the applicants that you've had. So for HR departments, the kind of contracts that you'll need to think about involve outsource providers like payroll operators, HR consultants. Particularly important is if you use there's two sort of software elements generally to how HR teams operate. And that'll be if you're using a bit of HR software, something like a human resources information system that allows people to book holidays and record their sick days, all that kind of thing. That software provider, that's a really important contract. Where is that stored? And what does the contract say about how that data is being kept secure? Um, so that's the first thing to do. Check who your suppliers are and who's dealing with data. And then what do the contracts actually say? A couple of other things that are um, important to the business generally, but that will be really important for HR teams, are the storage of data. So how is the data being stored on computers, laptops, personal devices? Um, have you got it in lots of different offices all over the place um, and is it easily accessible? So that's, are you complying with the storage requirement, but also is it kept secure? So how are you making sure as an HR team that the data of your employees is secure and that only the right people have access to it? So it's a process based um, uh, step really as in checking all of those things and then seeing what you need to do to correct any gaps in compliance. The final thing that is going to impact a business as a whole, as well as HR teams, is the new requirement for reporting breaches to the regulator. So basically what businesses need is a data breach response plan. It's not very, um, it doesn't roll off the tongue nicely that term, but that's what you need. You need a plan for if there's a data breach, what do we do? How do we, how do we let our employees know who, who, who do they tell? Who's the data protection officer? Or do they tell the, the head of the HR team? And then how do we discover what actually happened? That having that plan in advance, and if you can, doing a pretend run, doing a breach, a pretend breach, and seeing how well that plan stands up, is a really good insurance policy for your business in the future, should you suffer a data protection breach. And that plan's really important, because you're going to have to report data protection breaches to the ICO for the first time. That's mandatory, you have to do that. And you're also going to have to report the breaches to the data subject, which could be awkward or embarrassing if you haven't planned for how you're going to do that in advance.